Hi, uh, this is my uh, 2004 uh, uh, Suzuki Jimny. Uh, it's just now turned 38,000 miles, which is very low for the, for the age. But uh, it has a common problem, which uh, most of them have got, is the uh, crankshaft drive pulley disintegrates. Um, it happened to me on the way home from work. Uh, the, I lost all power, power steering, uh, electrics, and the uh, water pump. Um, which meant I had to pull over quite quickly, otherwise the engine would have overheated. Um, there was a bit of a flapping noise under the engine uh, when I lifted up the bonnet. I saw that the, uh, the pulley on the engine was going round, but the pulley on the outside was flapping around uh, near the fan. And obviously all the, belt, the, the two belts had come off, one that drives one way and one drives the other. Um, so I had to be recovered by the breakdown truck. Um, apparently this is quite a common problem. Uh, what it is, is uh, inside the engine compartment. I've taken the radiator out for a minute. Um, but there's a there's a pulley down in there, this pulley here, and it has an outer ring, which is here, which fits on there normally, and you wouldn't probably even notice it, but um, uh, keeping this part onto that part is a rubber, sort of a sleeve type thing, and it's vulcanised together normally. But apparently, over time, they tend to perish and separate. And when that happens, you lose your belts come off. In effect, so you, you lose your you lose your alternator, uh, your water pump, and your power steering, um, which means the car becomes quite heavy uh, and it will overheat within minutes. So it's quite important to stop straight away. And uh, well, you, you've had it then. <laughs> you just got to be recovered somehow or other. Um, but you can do it at home. Uh, it's quite an easy repair. I've done it myself. I've, I've, well, I'm in the process of doing it myself. Uh, it's not such a big job. You can take it to a garage if you want to, but it probably costs you three or four hundred pounds. Or you can get the parts for, I think mine was 120 pounds. And for three or four hours work, you can do it yourself. Um, I've taken the radiator out, which you might think, oh my God, that's a big job already, but it's not. Uh, all there is at the top of the engine, or the top of the radiator, there's two fixings, one here, one there, which is which bolts onto here and here, and, and that will completely loosen the radiator. But you can't get it out because it's got a cowl over it as well. And you think, oh, that's a bit of a problem as well, but it's not because it's the two fixing bolts here and here. And if you can see. There, there, and then another two down the bottom here and here. Um, you also need to drain the water down from the radiator, uh, otherwise you'll get wet, and take the two hoses off. Then the radiator will come out. You might have to uh, push the cowl in slightly over towards the fan, which is which I've also taken off. Um, I think it's an easier thing to do just to take the fan off as well. It is uh, it's this here. This is the fan. Uh, you'd be looking at it like that into the engine compartment um, and with a pulley on it, on it. But it's not that bad because it is only these four bolts here, four 10mm bolts. Take those four 10mm bolts out, you can lift the radiator and the fan all out in one, one easy step. Um, it's an easy way to do it because you can then gain complete access and see everything that you're looking at. Uh, there's no danger of uh, accidentally hitting something that you don't know is there or rounding a bolt off or, or something but uh, it's just just my personal preference I'd rather see exactly what I'm doing rather than fumbling around in the dark don't tell my wife that right um, the way I did it uh, I've seen some horror stories of uh, people putting a 17 mil on the end of here this is a 17 mil bolt and I've seen people put spanners on there and then crank the engines over to loosen that bolt. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that personally. Uh, I think if you know what force you're uh, dealing with, it's best to uh, be as controllable as you can with it. Um, so the way I did it, it's reasonably straightforward, is I've got a 19mm spanner, and I put it in the slot 
up inside there. Uh, see, the, there's, there's four slots here, and I just fitted it inside the slot like that, which made it rested on the bulkhead here, and that stops that pulley from turning because you, you want to undo the bolt, which is that rotation, so you need to stop that from turning. And then all I did is to get a 17 mil spanner. Uh, I tried to do it with a with the socket, um, but I don't think the socket idea is a particularly good way of doing it because uh, uh, you need a lot of force. This is what happens, and that didn't even move it. Uh, plus, you're a long way away from the bolt, so you've got a chance of slipping off. So I think it's better to do with the spanner on there. So you put the spanner on there like that. And then there's a lot of force required, so you need to extend your, your spanner length if you can. Um, now you've got, you have two options. You can uh, either chop the top off your spanner, um, or if, well, unless you've got a pole thick enough or uh, wide enough to take that end of the spanner, which I didn't, unfortunately. Um, but what I did do, I fortunately had this piece of here. So I'll just put, the, put you there a minute. So I had that. Slid that on there like that. And then I had this, which is my son's old ski pole that we made. Uh, slid that into there. Put that onto the bolt. And then just cranked it over. It is tight. And with that leverage, you're putting a lot of force on that spanner. So it needs to be uh, needs to be quite a good spanner. Or not necessarily, not, not cheap one from... From Halfords or, or someone like that, just uh, just some just just a, a reasonable spanner, but one you're not necessarily going to care about if you have to chop the top of it. If you have to chop the top of it, you've not ruined it because you've still got the you still got the ring, um, and that's the way I did it. Uh, it's an easy way to do it, I think. Um, so I've seen some YouTube footage, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the way they do it, but it's up to you. Uh, here is the uh, here is the the old ring here, uh, and this is the new one. Uh, this is the uh, this is the ring which has come away, and that is the ring that is still on the car at the moment. And that piece in there is the rubber piece, which is the bit that always fails, apparently. Um, it's quite a common problem. Uh, and this here is the part number. I'll um, I'll put a I'll put a link as to uh, the place I got it from. I think it was about 120 pounds. Um, and all I've got to do now is just fit it back on, and hopefully in a sort of an hour and a half time, it'll be fitted, and uh, I'll be away again. So there we go. All right, enjoy. See you later. Bye.